Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid Michigan. And today we are in the shade garden. We have filled out all of our sun beds and we have filled out our sun baskets. And now in the shade garden, I wanna fill in my shade baskets. So let me show you some of the plants that we're gonna work with today. So the primary plant that we are going to be planting in these hanging baskets are going to be these Rakapoko Rose Double Impatiens. These have absolutely beautiful pink flowers. They are double. And I'm, I've am i never tried these before, but I love Impatiens. I was going to use some of the other Impatiens that I bought, but I actually ran out. So I think these are gonna look lovely because they're even lighter color. So that will help to light up the shade garden. Now let me tell you a little bit more about this plant. So this plant is again called Rakapoko Rose Double Impatience. This one is by Proven Winners and it has a mounding habit. So this is gonna really fill out these baskets nicely. It grows about uh, 20 inches, 10 to 20 inches tall and 10 to 12 inches wide. And the hanging baskets that I have, I believe are 12 inch baskets. So this is really going to fill these up. I'm not gonna need much else in them. Um, these are annual except in zones 10A to 11B, and these are hardy down to 35 degrees. So as soon as you get a good frost or freeze, these are probably going to be done. Um, and they say to fertilize regularly for best results. What I'm gonna do today is add a little bit of organic fertilizer into my garden baskets as I plant. And these take part shade to shade. You actually don't have to deadhead these, so that's fantastic because that makes it nice and easy. You don't have to worry about coming back through and doing anything with it after it's been planted. Let me show you the other plant we're going to add to the basket. So this plant is actually just a foliage plant. This is Purple Prince Alternathera. And this Purple Prince Alternathera is an annual as well, but this has some really deep dark foliage to offset that nice light pink uh, flower that we have on the impatience. And so this one, I'm just going to put two in on either side of the impatience towards the front so that they can kind of spill over the sides. I think that's gonna look really pretty. So let's get started. All right, the first thing I need to do before I plant is to get some of this fertilizer in. And what I currently have on hand is Rose Tone. And this is just an organic fertilizer. This is by Espoma. And it has 432 as the components within it. And you can use pretty much any tone, really. It's just important that there's some nutrients available to the plants. If you already have some fertilizer in this planting soil that you have, um, I do not recommend adding additional fertilizer until you see whether or not your plants are doing well or if they look like they need it. So I'm just gonna add a couple handfuls of that into the garden basket and I'm gonna stir it in. And the reason why I'm adding this is because I have used the soil in these pots one season and so I think it's important to add some additional nutrients into the soil again. So just two handfuls and then we're going to mix it in. Next we're going to start by adding our impatience and we're going to plant them just slightly towards the back but not very much at all. I think I'm actually going to need this pot to be able to pull some of the soil out as I plant. These might be 14 inch baskets. I'm not positive. I have actually never measured these. And it might be easier for you to actually plant your hanging baskets um, if they are on the ground. But these are in just a nice spot for me right now that I can actually do this. Actually, I'm gonna take the bottom of this and I'm just gonna kind of splay it out so that the roots are a little bit shorter and they start to spread throughout the garden basket. Thank you. 
Now growing in this pot, this alternathia, I actually have a couple that are really tall and a couple that are fairly short. So I'm going to use a short one and a tall one in each basket just so that they don't look kind of funny. And hopefully what these will do is grow forward. And in order to encourage that, I'm actually going to plant them straight towards the front. So rather than planting them with their roots straight down, I'm planting the roots towards the impatient itself. And I will probably actually cut this one back to encourage it to branch out. I want these to be nice and bushy. It's gonna look empty once, uh, once we're done with this, but these should fill in rather nicely over the next few weeks. We have some excellent weather going on now. It's, you know, in the 80s here for the whole next week. All right, let's uh, do up the other basket. These are nice quick projects that just anyone can do in their garden. I got the Alternathia at the MSU plant sale, um, which I volunteered at and I spent a good amount of money at as well, um, but it was sure fun. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here where I just break open the bottom and I spread the roots to the side. I think that looks good. Now let's get the Alternathia in here. These are fairly root bound. They were grown in very small cells, but you can see they're just ready to get going and push out some new growth. I think as soon as we get these in here and they get watered in, they're just going to go to town. I like having the different colored foliage also here because underneath of these baskets are hostas that are blue and green. So there's not a lot of color in this area in terms of foliage. So having this pop of like a purple red is gonna be really pretty. All right, then we wanna make sure that we get these watered in as well. Now, one of the reasons I like to show hanging baskets and my planting schemes for them is because even though they don't look like a lot when they get started, they will eventually. And so I think a lot of new gardeners think they need to fill the basket completely, um, but that's just not the case. You wanna make sure that you pick out plants that are the right size and you want to make sure that they have enough room for their roots to grow. If you don't, your baskets will peter out really quickly, like by the end of July. And I have to say that I don't think it's really fun when plants peter out, do you? So let me just take you in a little bit closer so you can see. I think these are going to look great. So this impatience should grow forward and bush out. And then this will be kind of coming out from under each side of that. And it will actually bush out. In fact, I'll go ahead and pinch it so you can see. I'm just going to use my fingernail if I can. I don't know if it will let me. It might be too tough. It has a very strong stem. I have to come back through here, I think, with uh, some clippers. And I'll, I'll just pinch it off right here, right above these leaves and you can see it's already got some extra stems that are getting ready to grow there so it will get much bushier 
and the other one is just exactly the same on this side. All right, now we have some planting to do, and it is a dark side of the moon, a still bee. All right, next up, we have this beautiful astilbe. This is the dark side of the moon astilbe. And there are several varieties that are out there that actually have this dark foliage and they're really pretty. Now, this foliage, I believe, will actually be the darkest if you have a little bit more sun, but I am going to be planting it in the shade. And this one is about 20 to 22 inches high. By about two feet wide um, maybe up to 28 inches wide and it's hardy in zones four to nine so this one is a really nice hardy plant and it blooms from midsummer to late summer so it has a pretty good length of bloom season which is pretty much the same as the other astilbes that i have and it takes full sun to full shade so it's a really versatile plant um, and i love plants like that because you know, that way you don't have to worry about where you're planting them as much. You can plant them wherever you want and just focus more about what design you want to use or what color foliage you want and what size plant. So this is fantastic. They say it's got rich, deep chocolate brown leaves and the new leaves are yellow with a dark margin turning to completely dark as they age. And it has raspberry buds that open to rosy purple flowers. So I think it's good to mention that the new growth comes out a little bit yellow because people oftentimes equate that with an unhealthy plant. But um, that's not the case here. And let me see here. I think you can kind of see on this new growth, it's got some little tinges of yellow, but it has been in the sun for a couple of days. So it might even be a lighter shade when it's growing on. Um, in the shade. All right, let's get this into the ground. So we're going to be planting this in the shade garden. And right now you can see that I have a little spot right over here. And I also have a almost evergreen macrophylla geranium right there. And, or microphylla <laughs> macrorhizum geranium right there and so that one I think I'm going to actually pull that one because I do want to put this a still be with enough room to really grow and to add a little bit of color into this garden now I have a hosta that is right over here and I'm not sure what's wrong with it it has come back rather stunted and I think maybe something has dug under it, like a mole or something. So um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that in case you're wondering about why such a large leaf, leaf hosta is so short. Sometimes strange things happen with plants and um, I usually just live with it. There are a couple of autumn ferns that are in here that are just starting to grow that you can't see very well. So I'm gonna wanna make sure to avoid those. But again, I'm just gonna put it right in this area. All right, let's grab a shovel and get digging. We do have a bleeding heart right in this area as well. So there will be some nice early spring interest in this garden bed. And I do have this macrorhizum geranium in many different places. So it will not be too badly missed, but I just wanted to show you how easily that really pulls up just like that. And behind me is the Annabelle hydrangea, which I think is going to look really, really pretty with this a still be in front of it. Great, I can hear some roots down in there. I think we've got a nice hole. And I don't want to dig it too deep because I want to make sure this doesn't sink. We have really light, fluffy soil in this particular area of the garden. And actually, before I plant it, because this blooms, I am going to add some fertilizer down in there. I don't normally do that 
but I see the soil is a bit dry right now and these like it to be moist more so even if you plant it into a sunny space now I know it's dark in the shade garden so it can be a challenge uh, to see things but what I want to do actually is I want to remove this and I want to replace it with this June Hasta up front because the foliage on these Lancifolia Hastas, which is what this all green one is, tend to get eaten a lot by bugs and by the rabbits. I have some more of these in my garden as well. So I have plenty of them and I just see some um, grapevine uh, seedlings trying to get into this grass here. So I'm trying to make sure I pull those when I see them because those can take over rather quickly. Actually, you know what? I think this June Hassa is going to look really nice next to this astilbe. So I'm just going to move the hellebore a little bit further forward. Let's do that. because this was the one that I just recently planted. So it's gonna be super easy to replant. The ground's so soft here, my shovel just wants to fall over. All right. Yeah, good, it's starting to put some roots out. That's great. And we'll just move this far enough forward so it has a good amount of space. And I think that will be a little bit better. And we have the fern right here and a fern right here. So those are going to fill in as well. And I think kind of those, those autumn ferns have a little bit of an orangey vibe that will kind of go with this is still be also. All right, now I'm just going to water these in. You guys, as things grow, I'm prone to moving things just based on the way that I see them grow and where they're at. So I'm actually gonna move this hellebore over as well because this pasta is really filling in this big blue leaf one and I love it. So I wanna make sure it has plenty of space. Now, I've heard some people say that hellebores don't transplant well. Um, I think it just depends on what time of year that you move them. If you overwater or underwater them, or if you plant them too deep, they definitely do not like to be planted too deep. Maybe that's what's going on with this hasta over here. Maybe it's just sunken down a little. So I'm going to take you in a little closer just so you can see where the ferns are because they are so hard to see in the dark. We have a couple of them on either side of that hosta and then the astilbe with the hellebore and the hostas which will continue to fill out. Now I did just, I planted those two hostas, the one here and the one here uh, at the end of last year so that also could be why they are still working to plant their roots in place. 
Well, one of the next things that we're going to do today is we are going to trim these privets and uh, these are a golden privet because they are variegated with a little bit of yellow along with the green so I think they really light up this space but I have to trim these several times a year so I have this wonderful hedge trimmer that I use and I get it some people like to do these by hand uh, but I think that for me I was doing them by hand and I was doing all of my boxwood by hand and I have a lot of shrubs to prune and when Lithily sent out a shrub trimmer for me, yes, it's a little bit big for the job, but it sure does go awful fast. So I'm gonna show you how it's done, or at least how I do it. <laughs> so this wonderful trimming tool was sent to me last year and it is um, fairly large, but I actually really love using it for all of my different shrubs. I just used it on my boxwoods the other day out front and they are super large and uh, I definitely saved a lot of time with it. So I'm gonna show you how I do this with this tool. But like I said, you don't have to do things the way that I do. I'm just showing you something that I do and how I do it and what works for me. And you may have other ways that work for you in your garden, but this might work for somebody out there and hopefully be a little bit helpful. So my goal here is to create a nice smooth hedge and eventually I want these privets to connect to one another. Uh, in between these privets on the other side, I have some Red Riding Hood penstemon, and I wanna make sure that I don't trim those. So I'm gonna be careful of that, but my primary goal is to make sure that I get the curve along the edge of these rocks on the inside and the outside here, and then make sure that I'm trimming the tops off. One of the other things you want to make sure to do when you're pruning hedges is that you keep the top part of the hedge a little bit narrower than the bottom part of the hedge. That way you ensure that all of it continues to get sunshine and you don't get all of that die back at the bottom. I have a little cleanup to do, but as you can tell, we have a bit of a nice rounded shrub here that is kind of curving around with the stone. So I will continue to shape this over time. It will get better and better as the shrub fills in. Let's look at the other side. So I will need to clean up some of the clippings that we have now, but as you can see, this is definitely looking really good on this side and they're starting to grow together and I have trimmed at an angle towards the top at the very end of the trimming to ensure that I continue to get nice thick foliage down towards the bottom. You can see these Red Riding Hood penstemons down here are just getting ready to bloom. 
these are definitely going to be hopefully <laughs> anyways an attractor of hummingbirds all right everybody well that concludes some of the projects that i wanted to get done today i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time bye